Hello friends, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about uh, the recombinant protein. This is a vast topic uh, to cover but in this video I'm going to give you just overview about what is recombinant protein. If you know about all these things and techniques this, uh, this is not going to help you much but if you don't know what is recombinant protein then definitely this is the video for you. Now uh, proteins are the most important biological molecules that I always, always tell to people. So if you look at those, uh, those proteins like everywhere for every different purposes. So we definitely need proteins. We are producing proteins in our body. But in many aspects when our body will not produce a lot of those proteins which we require. In that case we need to acquire those proteins from outside. From, uh, from, from outside our body. We need to uptake them from outside. So in that cases those proteins are very much required like insulin. It's a hormone that's also a protein which is very much important for the regulation of blood glucose level. So this is one thing. Uh, so as there are different other proteins also that are required different protein sources. So uh, sometimes we need to prepare those proteins outside in the lab so that we can formulate them uh, in drug form and we can supply them to people. Uh, so for that reason we need to produce a lot of protein in very tiny amount of time and in a very low expense. So in that case we rely on a technology called recombinant DNA technology or simply better known as RDT. So using this recombinant DNA technology we produce proteins. Previously we used to produce proteins like insulins and all these things directly from other organic sources like cow. We just take out because the insulin is normally produced by our uh, pancreatic cells. So if we take the pancreas from cow, drag insulin out of it and then we put them into the drug form and take them. But now that is also problematic because obviously cow is another organism and they have another body features. Though the insulin that they produce are completely similar to that of our and will work properly in our body but still sometimes if the cow is infected with a disease like mad cow disease or something like that it can also transfer into our body and it can ultimately uh, create harm. So for that reason or cross contamination we block these processes and what we do here we use recombinant DNA technology to produce more and more proteins. So what is the idea? The actual idea here to get a lot of a lot of that proteins many many copies of the same protein we need to produce a lot of proteins and to produce this multiple number of same protein we use this recombinant DNA technology. So what is the idea if there is a protein made definitely there is somewhere an uh, mRNA for that protein should be present. If there is an mRNA definitely there is a DNA which code that mRNA. So obviously we, if, we, if we trace it back definitely that protein will be coded by a gene. Let's say this is the gene in blue color. So this is the gene for let's say insulin. I better write as insulin gene. But okay this is the gene for insulin. Now this gene we know that this gene produces this protein which is insulin here. So what we want to do here. We want a lot of insulin in, in small amount of time and in a way that it becomes cheaper because it will be consumed by many people irrespective of their economic condition. Now if, if we take this, now this is one idea, this is the gene of our interest. It becomes the gene of interest. So now the idea is if we want more proteins from this gene, we should have more, more of these genes. Because one gene here in this case, the insulin gene can produce multiple copies of proteins. If we go for multiple rounds of uh, transcription, it will produce multiple mRNA. And from those mRNA, multiple times translation will occur and can produce as protein. So what we can do here? So this is the eukaryotic gene. Remember, this is the insulin gene of eukaryotes. Okay. So we want multiple copies of this insulin gene and also multiple copies of the mRNA of insulin, multiple copies of insulin also. So here if we take this gene out and do certain process of multiplying it and then transcribe it and then translate it, we can have multiple number of uh, proteins, the same proteins like insulin here. So for that we should first take this gene out, right, the gene of interest out from the whole genome because the genome is large. So we trick take this gene out by using restriction endonuclease enzyme. We use that enzyme to cleave uh, the two sides of the gene so that we ultimately have only the desired gene here. Let's say this is the desired gene in our hand. 
So once we have our desired gene, now the second stage is that is to add this gene into a vector. Now what is a vector? Vector is a carrier molecule. Just like you, let's say you want to grow from uh, your house to your college. Now during that process, you cannot walk all the time. Let's say it's a distant process. You want a vehicle uh, with which you can go there. So here in this case, the vector acts as a vehicle and in this case this gene is acts as you so this gene will be tagged will be attached stitched with the vector and the vector can migrate the vector can move so let's say here the vector as we use here is from let's say this is a vector a plasmid a plasmid vector plasmid plasmid is also a double stranded let's say this one Plasmid is also a double-stranded DNA found in bacteria, in prokaryotes. Remember, this is in prokaryotes. We just take it uh, from, let's say, from E. coli, Escherichia coli cell. We are taking this plasmid. So we have this plasmid as a vector, and we have this segment of gene there, the desired gene. Now the second stage here is to take this gene and incorporate gene in the plasmid. In the vector whatever vector there are multiple types of vector plasmid vector there are other bacterial artificial chromosome yeast artificial chromosome phage mid vector and all these things so in this case we'll cleave some portion of this vector so now it's open now we drag it we just place it inside using different enzymes and usually the enzyme is dna ligase remember because dna ligase has very important function there because dna ligase can seal the double stranded DNA segments. So here after this ligation, what we'll get here is a construct that's called a construct of the desired gene with the with this blue color along with the plasmid content. Now this molecule, which is consisting of one part from the prokaryotic segment, that is the vector part. Another part is from the eukaryotic gene, that is the desired gene. This is called a recombinant DNA. This one is called a recombinant DNA molecule. So once we have this recombinant DNA molecule, we know now this, this plasmid, the important factor about this vector like the plasmid is that they can undergo self-replication. They're self-replicatory molecule. So they can do their own replication. So they can multiply inside the cell in number of multiple numbers, multiple times. That is possible. So now once we prepare this, the recombinant DNA, and as it is consist construct of a prokaryote and eukaryotic DNA segment, we also call it a chimeric, chimeric plasmid, or chimeric vector, whatever. Because it's a construct from two different species like prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Completely, not actually species, huge difference. Now once we have this recombinant DNA, the third stage is to insert this recombinant DNA inside a cell, which can carry it. For example, a bacterial cell, let's say the E. coli cell. So now we have this E. coli cell. This is the E. coli cell, for example. E. coli cell have its own genome, whatever. Now what we do actually, we, we take this and insert this inside the E. coli genome. So now what we have is something like this inside the E. coli genome. So the recombinant DNA is now inside the E. coli cell. So now this plasmid can grow and replicate and replicate itself, increase the number of copies inside the E. coli cell, right? So now if you look, so don't complex it with this genome of E. coli, that's a complete different thing. Plasmid can self-replicate. So after some time what we can see that inside the E. coli cell there will be multiple, multiple number of this let's say recombinant molecules and let's say recombinant DNA, I just draw it with red color here for, for simplicities and time. All of these are uh, recombinant DNA molecule and let's say this one is the genome, whatever. These are all the recombinant DNA molecule. So once we have this, now we know that not only replication will take place but also translation. Now if they express this gene because after the replication there will be transcription, they will produce the mRNA. Remember, they will all produce the mRNA. From that mRNA, it will be translated into proteins. 
Now remember, if we translate this, this gene of our interest, that is in blue in color here, that is the insulin, what we get? We get insulin proteins. So if we get multiple number of genes, we will get multiple number of proteins. So that process, this whole process is called as a cloning, molecular cloning. You probably heard this name. Now this whole process is called as the cloning. And the proteins that we make using this recombinant DNA technology or molecular cloning technology is termed as recombinant protein. That is very, very simple. But this whole process took a long time and also very different complicated stages also. So if you want to know all details about molecular cloning and how all this process work, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can find videos on each and every single topic that I have discussed here in far more details. Right? But for now, this is the overview of recombinant proteins and they are extremely helpful, extremely important in many aspects. So that's it guys. If you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, like the video and also share this with your friends in Facebook, in Twitter, in all other social networking sites. Thank you.